All right, does that make sense though, guys? So we're looking for this, and we're just doing proteomes at the beginning uh, to see what happens there. And, but that could be like a whole new field of immunology, actually. So that's cool. The other one, of course, is that this is just, this is everything, right? Because these things, in theory, would be protecting all macroorganisms could be using them. So plants, of course, have exactly these sorts of things sticking out on them. Chitin and in insects, so things that don't have mucosal membranes. So this would be all insects, right? And all uh, fungi would it be expected to have this sort of stuff. The other thing that I think we should think, uh, Laura, you're looking at this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Right. The other thing is the ocean as a gel. Right, so remember, the ocean is basically all these uh, polymer. It's a polymer, a polysaccharide polymer that condenses into uh, uh, POM, which gets broken up, and then it becomes dissolved, and we don't see it anymore. But it's actually uh, the gel-like structure is maintained by polysaccharides with calcium bridges between them, and we think that actually most of the activity of the ocean is happening on those particle in that particle space, right? So you could definitely imagine, in fact, we have a model <laughs> of this, which was never published because of, for various reasons, about like how um, particle space would work. And if you have particle space and you have phages holding on to those particles, this, of course, would give the phage an advantage, right? So this could be going on in the gel, uh, sorry, in, in general things like that. So really, we should be thinking about basically everywhere where we might apply the same logic to it, right? Because we have the tools now and we can we can ramp them up even more, right? So this should be very cool stuff, right? This is an immune system that would work. This possibly is an immune system that has memory and is specific that works across all domains of life, right? That's pretty cool. Or at least all macroorganisms. So do you yes. think that this could explain, you know how you said that cells exist so viruses have something to eat, right? Yeah. Now we're kind of on the other side where this kind of thing could lead to viruses being so successful. No. no? The reason that they're so successful is for the viral information thing we're talking about. No, but a large part. <laughs> you would expect there to be quite a diversity of viruses involved in this game. Yeah, but that's a small part of the diversity. So we are a minor component of the diversity yeah. on the planet, right? So even, I mean, yes, this allows us to expand their niches, right? Mm -hmm. But macroorganisms are still small compared to the micro you know, part of it, right? So I would say that, like, you know, I don't know exactly how much of the slice of life that's viral associated actually is dependent on macroorganisms. So you've listed just large organisms here like plants and insects and stuff like that, there's no way that little bacteria could have the same thing? Could do... Could, could have the same, because they've got gooey stuff on their surface too, right? Right. Yes, it's like crazy. Yeah, I don't... I can't figure out how they would use it, but they might be able to do it, right? Yeah. But it's the same thing as a biofilm. You just have a biofilm with virofilm on top, and then away you go. Yeah, yeah. like a stromatolite yeah. and stuff would yeah. be a great place to look at those sorts of things. Yeah. I mean, there's a ton of possibilities that we yeah. should figure out. So really, every time you have biofilm, you should think virofilm. That's what I'm saying. You think, I'm not even sure I can put this the right way, there might be a degree of sharing this system between people of close contact? Like, say, you know, your partner or whatever, if you... No, I if actually... one gets infected with a microbe, say it's a staph infection, yeah. and then subsequently if he overcomes it, and now has built phage uh -huh. within him to that, or her, to that staff, yeah. and then kissy-kissy to the partner, you think there might be a degree of... I doubt it because I doubt the phage very often get through our gut, to tell you the truth. Not as a free phage. Oral. Yeah, so they don't, it's got to be particle associated because they're, it's hard to be a phage and make it through the acid and the biosalts of our gut. So they're almost always doing that, I would assume, associated in a bacteria that has the ability to survive. But you're talking about like topical. Like yeah, for example, we could you could use this against like STDs. Associated maybe oral yeah. pharyngeal infections in yeah. age. Mm. Maybe that's going on, yeah. Like I wonder yeah. if you could even do like an epidemiological study where the number and try of people to figure that got out. track the bug and the people that been infected that weren't in direct contact with each other, if they had a better degree of 
the fence. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I yeah, that would give to the memory thing. That's a good idea. No, I have it. Yeah, that would be. Well, Kelly Duran might be interested to her vaginal bacteria. You're like, hey, babe. I've got some viruses. Let me inoculate you. You think that'll work? Savannah, would you go for that in the car? <laughs> All right, we need to move beyond this. Stephen has a question. <laughs> so there must be some data sets out there where someone has added some kind of paths into a mucus surface and done like transcriptomes or whatever. Have you mined any of that looking for like glycosylation enzyme activity and stuff like that? Because I mean, you'd expect yeah. obviously all that stuff to change. And there well, probably is a lot of data out there on this. Oh, yeah. But they oh, don't yeah. know what they're looking at. Exactly, yeah. But the mucus, yeah, changes a ton. Yeah. On what's going on, right? So yeah. it's, a, it, it's this is a two way street, right? So this is like, I guess what I, I'm proposing right now one is that we should uh, collectively be thinking about how to really build this into cool things, right? But the, the other thing is to, like, if, we're, if we consider those two germ layers, like, working against each other and together, right? Like, that that gives you amazing amounts of dynamics that are totally unexplored at this point, yeah. right? So we really do need to think about, like everybody's thinking about like the microbiome is like kind of in a very simplistic way, you know, how does it help us break down food or something like that, right? This is completely different, right? So this is the game, and this is probably actually I'll bet you one of the main games that's being played out there, right? And the math is pretty striking, right? You don't even need the specificity. That's a, once you have the specificity, then it gets even cooler, but right, with even without the specificity, just having a, the phage helps macroorganisms make it. So that's cool, yeah. All right, are we done? Let's call that that. That's